Orcish flight engineering is truly a marvel. From tiny, single grot aircraft, through screaming Dacca jets and fighter bombers, all held together through pieces of string and sheer willpower in the belief in the war. But what if we went bigger? Then you might end up with something like the Evi Bomber, or its cousin here, the Grot Bomber. Huge, improbable fortresses of steel floating in the sky. But then what happens if we throw big out the window and just go absolutely massive? And then we give the Gretchen some paintbrushes and see what they can do. Let's find out, shall we? Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name is Ollie, and this is my hobby. Today, we're painting up the Orc Air War Mega Bomber from Aeronautica Imperialis. This is the largest plane you can currently get for the game, dwarfing all other aircraft with its sheer size and bulk. Aeronautica Imperialis is one of my favorite games Games Workshop has brought out in recent years, mostly due to the fact that it can actually be played in an evening and doesn't require the deluge of rules and extra accessories that you need to play a game like 40K. Let me know in the comments about your favorite non-40K games. I'm excited to learn about any hidden gems that I may have missed. My approach to painting Aeronautica is similar to how it plays. It should be quick, simple, and effective. However, as this is such a large canvas to work on, I'm gonna give a bit of extra love to this massive behemoth by adding a few little orky details. I'm starting from a white primed model that I'm then basing with wood color from Vallejo. This is quite a good color match for Avaland Sunset, which I would normally use, but unfortunately I've just run out, just in time for a new yellow based orc project. I then use my airbrush to lay down some highlight layers on the yellow. Now I'm not gonna to focus too much on this step as I do actually come back in and redo the yellow armor a bit later on. You shouldn't worry if you do make mistakes, as it shows that you're pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and trying something new. So be prepared for this to happen occasionally during hobby projects. I did decide that while I had the airbrush out, I would also block in all the metal details. Some of these are quite large, particularly the big engines on either wing. I did this using gunmetal from Vallejo, which is rapidly becoming my go-to silver paint, as it goes on super smoothly in a single coat, and I've never had any issues with the finish. Now, if you're going to paint metals, keep mixing them up. It's gonna give you a more realistic impression if you have multiple different colors of metals on your models. I was gonna primarily use my gun metal and then also a sort of coppery color called Rust from Vallejo. And I always try and come up with an in-universe reason for why a particular part might be painted in a certain way. As an example, on this model, I thought that in the engines there might be copper elements just because copper I know is good at transmitting heat away. So maybe you wanna get heat away from those engines as it exits the sort of exhaust at the back. Even if the science doesn't add up, remember we're dealing with a universe here where you might have terrifying warp entities facing space nuns with guns with a literal tank that fires missiles out of a pipe organ. So don't overthink it. Also, don't overthink too much about smashing the like button and sharing with your friends if you are enjoying the video. I also painted a few different colors, reds, greens, blacks, and a few metallic colors on the underside of the model. I then came in and shaded everything with Agrax Earthshade, and this is about where I left the underside of the plane. As with all of my Aeronautica paint jobs, I'm not too fussed about the underside because what you're gonna see when you're playing is the plane from the top down. Agrax Earthshade over everything was probably a mistake. Normally what I would do is I would pin wash in between each of the panels of my yellow armor, but I think I probably got a little bit too excited with airbrushing my different yellow highlights to do this. However, Agrax Earthshade and a bit of non-oil on all of the metallics was a really great shout. Grimy engines covered in grease, oil, and who knows what else is really in keeping with the flavor and character of a model like this. After this, I dry brushed the metal areas with Vallejo Silver Paint. Once I'd finished the metals, I decided to go back to my yellows as I wasn't quite happy with the effect. I went back to my wood color from Vallejo and rebuilt up that yellow base color. And then I pin washed everything with Agrax Earthshade. Following on from this, I highlighted up using a 50-50 mix of Uriel Yellow and Vallejo Wood. And then for the final highlight, I layered on pure Uriel Yellow. Now this paint was quite claggy, so I needed to thin it down quite a lot and applied quite a few layers just to make sure that it went on really nice and smooth. If you ever need to patch up a yellow paint job, go back in with a warm off-white with good coverage. I tend to use Wraith Bone. And then once that's dried, you can start building back up those layers of yellow. It's gonna be a lot easier than trying to cover over Agrax Earthshade, which is very dark with very thin yellow paint, which famously has poor coverage. With a better idea of how the yellow was going to look, I decided to build up a few details on the back of the plane. I decided to invert what they have in the photograph on the Forge World website by putting red and black areas on the back of the plane. I also painted in here a few checkerboard patterns. 
Quick tip for checkerboards, what you need to do is first map out a grid of where you want your little squares to go and then fill in every other square. In this way you're going to end up with a much neater effect. I continued pin washing and highlighting up my armour panels working from back to front. I did this methodically so that I could make sure that I wouldn't miss any armour panels. Next was on to the finishing stages and I decided that I wanted a flame effect on the front of the wings. To do this I decided to design my own stencil for airbrushing. I grabbed a piece of card and cut out the rough shape of the aeroplane wing. With that I then drew onto my cutout where I needed the flames to go up to so I could make sure they were only on the front panel, and then I drew some flame shapes onto the card using a micro pen. Once I'd drawn my flame shapes I came in with a pair of scissors in order to cut them out. I was actually really surprised with the fidelity you can get using a big pair of just regular kitchen scissors. Once I had my stencil prepped it was just a case of sticking it to the model. For this I used white tack and then I also used masking tape around the edges in order to make sure that it didn't get onto any of the areas I'd already painted. I then came in with my airbrush to spray onto my stencil. Now I'd done a couple of tests and I was pretty sure that it was going to work but it was still a nerve wracking moment when I was first pulling off the masking tape. So for my first attempt at airbrushing with a stencil I think there are some things that I could improve but in the spirit of the orcs I'm going to try and make the best out of what I've got. Using the same micro pen that I used to draw my stencil, I actually drew directly onto the model in order to map out where the edges of the flame should be and give them a bit more definition. Going forward, I may actually just do this straight onto models as it seemed like a really good way of establishing that really neat fine line around the edge, which can sometimes be quite difficult with a paintbrush. Once that was done, I then came in and blocked up to that line using black paint. By giving myself somewhere to aim for, it did make it a lot easier to get a nice crisp line. I then came in with my Signal Red paint and used this to block in the rest of the flames that hadn't got covered and also as it wrapped around the bottom of the wing. Now using the micro pen to draw directly on the model was something completely unexpected and those kind of things are really cool when they crop up in the hobby. One thing I will say is you need to be careful as particularly on resin models it did seem like it wanted to chip off the paint. With the flames now painted I now moved on to the final big detail for the model which was the windows. To set off the paint scheme for the orcs, I've decided on painting them with a vibrant blue sky with occasional clouds. I started off by base coating each of the windows with Macrag blue, and then I layered on top of this using 50-50 mix of Araman blue and Macrag blue. I focused this towards the top half of each of the window panels. And then I took pure white and thinned it down in order to let myself draw some little fluffy clouds towards the top of each window. I then took pure Araman blue and focused this towards the sort of top third of the window panels. Now once I was happy with my clouds, I noticed that the layers between each of the blues were quite stark, so I wanted to blend them together. I took my 50-50 mix of Araman Blue and Macrag Blue and thinned it down to a glaze consistency. Then what I did is drag it from the top to the bottom so that I had the darkest colour pooling towards the bottom of each of the panels. This helped to smooth out the transition and make it look a bit more like a vibrant blue skyline. Lastly, I wanted to add some contextual details. As I already had the blue glaze paint on my palette, I started off by glazing a little bit of this blue onto the brightest metal areas on the model. This should hopefully give a bit of an impression that it's flying through the same cloudless sky you can see reflected in the window. Now this effect is subtle, but it's something that I'm going to take forward for my models so I think it might be something really cool to explore in future projects. I also went in to do some battle damage using combinations of rust, rust metallic and typhus corrosion to really give the idea that it's been on grimy grungy battlefields and is constantly under fire. It is a pretty big target after all. Once I was happy with the grunginess of the paint job I also came into some of the areas that I've marked with rust with a little bit of my gunmetal. This was meant to simulate that the paint had chipped off of the outside. In some of these to represent bullet holes I also put a little bit of black in the centre just to again give that little bit of extra depth. And with that the paint job is done. So that was an epic journey which is really befitting a model of this kind of stature. I think my main takeaway from this is that not every project is going to be smooth sailing. Sometimes things are going to go wrong and sometimes you'll have to adapt what you're trying to do. But if you keep a cool head and you don't just throw your toys out the pram, you can end up with something that you're really proud of and I'm really happy with how this turned out. If you have enjoyed this video, please do consider hitting the like button. Also, try sharing it with your friends as that really lets me know that other people might enjoy this and the sort of content to keep making in the future. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I will see you next time.